All right, what we have here today is the MacBook Air M1. I'm really excited about this. I just picked it up. What we're gonna be doing in this video is an unboxing and I'm gonna be giving you my first impressions. Uh, running through some of the things I do on the daily basis, so video editing, gaming. Now, I was able to get this at the education pricing. I'm currently enrolled in school, and I was able to get these AirPods for free, so that was a cool little added bonus. Even with that, it still cost me about $900, which is way more than I like to spend on laptops. If you've been watching this channel for some time, you probably know I usually prefer used ThinkPads, so even at a discount, this was still expensive for me. So to go ahead and help me with the cost of all this stuff, I would like to thank the sponsor of this video. So this video is brought to you by Western Rise and their Diversion Pants. They are highly versatile, very comfortable pants that I'm currently wearing out here while I'm on a hike with my dog. They are overall well-rounded pants that will work in any situation. They're stretchy, but not like a yoga pant stretchy, like a real nice fitting stretch. One thing I really like about these pants is the cell phone pocket in the front. It's a good size, so even my big One Plus with a case fits in there. And there's a zipper pocket on the back where you could go ahead and hide your wallet. The company has over 5,000 five-star reviews, so everybody else likes them. Chances are you will too. Personally, they are the best pair of pants that I own. And right now, you could go ahead and try them out risk-free. You could try different sizes, colors, whatever. Seven days, the company will not charge you unless if you decide to purchase them. But chances are you will, they're awesome. You could go ahead and use the URL on the screen right now, or go ahead and click the link in the description for 10% off. So once more, thank you to Western Rise for sponsoring this video. With that said, let's go ahead and start with the unboxing. While we go ahead and do this, I'm gonna be talking about why I decided to go with the Air instead of the Pro other than the cost. Um, the uh, Air, I, I spent a lot of time watching videos going over the benchmarking between the Air and the Pro, and the primary differences seem to be about a 10 to 15% uh, performance boost going to the Pro, and for me that just wasn't enough to justify the cost. Additionally, one of the primary differences, the Pro comes with a fan integrated into the device, and for some people that may be a Pro, but for me, honestly, I think it might be better without because I'm not gonna be doing a ton of super intense tasks. Uh, I will use it for video editing here and there, but overall, I'm gonna be using this for emails and uh, school stuff. So I really don't think I'm gonna be throttling the CPU that much. And being that there's not an actual physical spinning fan in here, I think that might make this last a little bit longer. So before we go ahead and open this up, this is the base model. It's the eight gigabyte of unified memory a 256 gigabyte SSD, it's the 13 inch with the Apple A1 chip. But I know generally with Apple products, you don't really pay too much attention to that because they do really good at integrating the software with the hardware to get you the best performance possible. So let's go ahead and slide this open. All right, so here is our actual MacBook. Now we have the little thing to go ahead and pull it up. And the first thing I'm noticing, it's a fairly light device that's not too heavy. Uh, I'm not sure the exact weight. I think it comes in at like two point something pounds. That's something else I'm going to go ahead and throw on the screen. I'm going to go ahead and put that out of the way for now. because so we're going to check out what else is in this box here. So first things first, we have a little packet with our manuals designed by Apple in California. There's probably uh, some Apple stickers in here somewhere. Of course there is. Now the last time I used an Apple computer was probably back in 2014. I used those bigger iMacs in my video production class. But really, that's all the experience I have for actually using Macs. Here we have our Type-C charging cable and our AC adapter right here. Let's see how powerful it is. It's in a little uh, protective thing, so let's go ahead and open this up. That might be a little hard to see, but it is a 30-watt power adapter. And I do believe that's it for what's in the box here. So with that said, let's go ahead and take this uh, plastic cover off here. So just slide that up. Slide the MacBook out, and here we go. It is a very clean device overall. I'm liking the look of it. Like I said, I'm used to using old ThinkPads, so this is incredibly sleek for what I'm used to using. Right here on one of the sides, you can see we have two USB-C, I think it's USB 4 Thunderbolt connectors, and really that's it when you look around the device. We do have an audio jack, which honestly, I'm surprised that's there. Oh, it's turning on. 
So it's got a little screen protector thing in here. All right, so here is our first boot. It's gonna ask us to go ahead and select our language. Uh, I really like the feel of this trackpad. It's a very good size and the keyboard is nice, especially for just being a typical laptop keyboard. All right, so pick our country and region. This reminds me a lot of a uh, Linux kind of startup screen here. All right, so it's been a couple hours. I'm completely logged into the system. I have a bunch of different applications that I need. And actually all the footage from, uh, well, before this shot right here, I've loaded up in DaVinci Resolve and already edited. So I have experience doing that. I've installed some games. I haven't really played them yet. But first, one thing I want to mention is DaVinci Resolve. It is one of the smoothest video editing experiences that I've ever had. Actually shuffling through the tracks here, there's absolutely no lag at all. And all this footage that you're seeing right here that I'm shuffling through is color corrected. So it is doing a little bit of post-processing while I'm running through this. And there's no hiccups at all. This is 1080p footage. So editing in 1080p on this device is probably going to be no issue at all. Now, one thing I haven't tested yet is the render time. So what we're going to do real quick is go ahead and render out this footage. I'm just going to call it uh, draft one because I still have a lot of editing to do. Uh, we're going to do a quick time H264, keep everything at the default, add to the render queue, save it out into my movies and hit render all. So now the process is starting and it is going pretty quick. All right, so the render is about done. This is a minute and four second clip and it took 58 seconds to render. Not the fastest, craziest render speeds in the world. Uh, my Ryzen over there usually does it in two or three times speed. But overall, this is fantastic for a little mobile CPU. And I know if I tried to do this render on my 2014 ThinkPad, it probably would have taken three to four minutes to render out this one minute clip. So I am incredibly happy with that. Now that I know that I can handle my video editing for sure, I want to know if it can handle some light gaming. This is a Mac, so it's not intended to be a gaming machine. You can't play a lot of different games. Linux has far more gaming support than Mac OS at the moment. But what we're going to do is go ahead and load up Minecraft. Right now I have all the video settings set to default. So I think it's at like 16 chunks or something like that and everything else is what it would normally be. And right now I'm jumping between 40 and 60 frames per second. So definitely very playable. I'm not really having any stuttering, any lagging. Overall, everything is looking good. So if I did need to throw open some Minecraft, it shouldn't really be a problem at all. Now, one thing I want to go ahead and test out is how hot does this thing get? We're going to open up Cinebench and run that for about 10 minutes or so. Uh, not to actually get a Cinebench score, but just to heat up the system, full throttle it. And then I'm going to go ahead and flip it over, find the hottest point and see what temperature reading it's giving us. So right now we have Cinebench rocking. It's been going on for about eight minutes or so. The CPU has been throttled 100% the entire time. Now I could go ahead and check the internal temperature of the CPU, but what's really important to me is not burning my lap or my hand. So I have this little guy. And first what I'm gonna do is check the temperatures of the keycaps here, because that's where your fingers are gonna be resting for the most part. And those are at about 98 degrees Fahrenheit or 36.7 degrees Celsius. And just feeling around the hottest part seems to be the middle right above the function bars. So if we give that a check here, we are at about 108 degrees Fahrenheit and 42.4 degrees Celsius. So now let's go ahead and flip it over this way. And we are at about 112 degrees Fahrenheit and 44 degrees Celsius. So it definitely does get a little bit warm if you're gonna be uh, full throttling it like this. It's still hot, but it's definitely tolerable. And it's more up here near the function key, so you could still type and do things with it this hot. But if this was sitting on my lap, that would not be comfortable. All right, so here we have a webcam test. This is a 720p webcam but supposedly it has some post-processing to make it a little bit better than it actually is. Not the best webcam. Supposedly the mic is pretty decent. I don't know because I can't hear it, but you all can hear it because you're watching this video. With that said, what we're going to do now is go ahead and actually get onto our system just so I can kind of skim through it and talk about some of the things that I noticed, especially coming over from something like a Linux-based system to a Mac OS system. All right, so we're using the same webcam 
the better microphone so y'all can hear me a little bit better. But this is Mac OS. And so, so far I'm enjoying it. I've only been using it a couple hours. There's been a couple things I had to get used to. One thing for sure, their settings menu is absolutely wonderful. If I go over to trackpad, for example, every setting you hover over will give you a visualization of exactly what it's talking about. So you can see I can go ahead and slide in those, slide that back out. There's a lot of different touch gestures within Mac OS that is awesome and I'm actually probably going to try to get used to and start using. There are some things like to right click technically is to do like two fingers at the same time, but I switched that to the right corner because there's no way I'm going to get used to that. Uh, but overall there's a lot of different things to change in the settings. If I go under this dock and menu bar settings, you can see all of the options we have. We have the magnification, the size, the positioning, but there's not really too many visual settings to actually change how this looks. So you're pretty locked in with that other than the light and dark theming. So if I can find that, I'm not sure what it would be under appearance right here. So general, yeah, here it is. So we have our light, dark auto theming. So we could go dark and then we could change our accent colors if we'd like to. For example, this purple right here. And you can see this is a pretty good looking system. We have our default web browser selected here. You can see prefer tabs, all those settings. Overall, the organization is okay. Some of the things don't make too much sense. Um, Got to get rid of that. There we go. The touch ID is really nice. There's actually a little button up on the top that you just put your finger over to do the touch ID. So that avoids having to type in your password a lot. You still have to type it in the first time on boot, but that's really the only time. Now, one thing I really liked and disliked is the uh, scaling. Overall, it handles perfect, but I wish there was like another option so I could go with the uh, the native resolution because this is basically a 2K display and you can see it looks like 1680 by 1050 for the uh, the smallest scaling that you could go. Right here, this is default, so this is what you get out of the box, but you could go even bigger if you'd like to. Um, I'm not going to do that. We'll, we'll stick with more space for now because that's basically as small as I could get everything to be. Wish I could go a little bit more, but that's not that big of a deal. Other than that, coming over from Linux to this, like I remember trying to mimic this in Rocket Doc a while ago, but I could go ahead and open up my downloads and we could see what's in there. Uh, that's one thing. Installing applications is a little bit different than what I'm used to. Uh, you open up these uh, individual mounted disk images and you just drag and drop the application into your applications folder. So I thought that was weird. I do kind of remember doing this a while ago, but when I first saw this, I kind of blinked for a sec and then figured it out. So that's a little different. One thing being that this is a Unix file system, uh, I'm pretty used to how it's laid out and everything with uh, this being my home folder and all these are my subdirectories in my home folder. And then if I go ahead and open something up, for example, I could go hit go up here and go to the computer, go to the Macintosh HD, and here it's kind of laid out the, uh, not exactly, but very similar to how the Linux file structure is laid out. So that's some familiarity in it, and I do like that. And you can see like this Minecraft, it's mounted as a disc, and I could go ahead and eject that and then go over to my uh, downloads and just get rid of all this stuff. So I think it's command delete. Yeah, and that's another thing. I'm not used to the command control option thing going on here. So that's something I have to get used to. So overall, I'm fairly impressed with this device. Uh, a lot of it didn't blow me out of the water, but there were some things that really stood out to me, primarily the performance in DaVinci Resolve. General web browsing, and like right now I'm using Audacity and it's a wonderful experience. So the things that I need to use a laptop for, this thing right here is going to be absolutely perfect. One thing I'm going to have to get used to, and this is just a thing with Macs, and really any modern laptop, is using things like this. This is a little uh, Type-C dongle here. Shout out to the Pine Phone. It's the same one that came with the 3GB uh, Pine Phone model. But using things like that is something I'm going to have to get used to compared to a ThinkPad with a bunch of different ports and things like that. But overall, I'm really looking forward to using this for future projects. Uh, I'm going to try to go ahead and throw Ubuntu on it. I've seen videos and I've seen other people kind of doing it. But we're going to be doing some experiments and playing around with it. 
So do make sure you are subscribed for future looks at this, uh, uh, Linux things. It, it, it's going to be fun overall. With all that said, I would like to thank our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. We have Mitchell Valentino, uh, Kyle, Phil, Mac, and Timo. Anthony, you guys are some of the highest tier Patreon supporters or YouTube members, so thank you guys so much for that. If you're interested in becoming a YouTube member, there's a little join button down below. You get emojis, badges, things like that, or you can just do it over on Patreon. With all that said, I hope you all have an absolutely beautiful day. Uh, thanks to our sponsor for helping me afford this thing. Uh, yeah, thank you guys. Check out those pants. They're awesome. Have a beautiful day, and goodbye.